Hey guys, so I know a lot of y'all are having problems with the CBEST math test. So I had our curriculum developer, Clarissa Simmons, give me five types of common questions you're likely to see on the exam. And I'm just gonna go through those five questions with you today so you can have a better hint of where you should be studying and what you can expect. Now, all these questions come over 240 Tutoring Study Guide. The study guide has way more questions. I think we have something like 364, 450 questions, just math questions in the study guide. So this is just a small sampling to give you a better idea of what and how you should be studying. So we're just gonna sit down. I've got my computer, it's this silver bar right here at the bottom of your screen. I'm just gonna read you through some questions that are straight from our 242 Tutoring Study Guide. And these are common types of questions you'll see on the Praxis Core. Let's go question one. Put the following fractions in order from least to greatest. One half, three fourths, five sevenths, three sixteenths. I want you to pause the video and try to order these fractions from the least, the smallest, to the greatest, the biggest. Now the answer options are gonna be one half, three quarters, three sixteenths, and then five sevenths. One half, three sixteenths, three quarters, five sevenths. Three sixteenths, one half, five sevenths, three quarters. And then finally, three sixteenths, five sevenths, one half, and three quarters. Now, the easiest way to order these is to convert them to decimals and then round to the hundreds. So one half equals roughly 0.5, three quarters equals roughly 0.75, five sevenths equals 0.71, and three sixteenths equals 0.19. Then you just order the decimals and you pair it with the fractional equivalent. Another option is to find a common denominator among all the fractions. This would be kind of tricky since finding a common denominator between seven and 16 would get pretty high. But once you find the common denominator, you can multiply the numerator by that common denominator multiple so you can have equal fractions. Now, a little bit of a testing tip. One of the easiest ways to answer this is just identify the smallest fraction on there. And then any answer option that doesn't begin with that fraction, you can eliminate. And the same is true for the largest fraction. So the correct answer here is gonna be 3 sixteenths, one half, five sevenths, and three quarters. That's the correct order from least to greatest. And this type of ordering numbers is very common from fractions to irrational numbers. It is very, very common to have to order a set of values from least to greatest. Now, let's move on to our second question. If X is between 10 and 20, and Y is between 100 and 200, X over Y must be. Now I want you to pause the video for a minute, think about it. It's always a good idea to try to answer a math question prior to looking at the answer options if you have time and you feel comfortable doing so. So the answer options are gonna be one over 10, one over five, between 120 and 110, or between 1 20th and one over five. Now pause the video and take a minute to find the correct answer. Now, the correct answer is between 1 20th and 1 5th. Now, the least number will result from the smallest x value over the largest y value. So this will be 10 over 200, which equals 1 20th. The greatest number will result from the largest x value over the smallest y value. This will be 20 over 100, which equals 1 5th. Let's move on to the third question. Now, the graph on the screen shows the approximate population of the United States beginning in 1970. Assuming the population trend continued in the same manner, what would be a reasonable estimation for what the population of the United States was in 2010? So the answer options would be 290 million, 270 million, 260 million, 250 million. Now, take a minute, see if you can figure out the correct answer. The correct answer is gonna be 290 million. The population increases about 20 million people per year every 10 years. So if you look on the graph, the estimated population in 2010 would be 290 million. All right, let's look at the fourth question today. The west wall of a square room has a length of 13 feet. What is the perimeter of the room? So the answer options would be 48 feet, 52 feet, 169 feet, or there's just not enough information to know. The correct answer is 52 feet. A square has four sides of equal length. So the perimeter is the total distance around an object. So to find the perimeter of a square, just follow the formula, P equals 4S, 
where p is the perimeter and s is the length of a side. In this case, p equals four times 13, which is 52 feet. Now, let's look at the last question. If four x minus five y over two equals negative 10, and x equals five, then what is the value of y? Now, this is a very, very common question. You are almost guaranteed to see at least one question, probably multiple questions like this on the exam. And essentially, it's solving for some sort of variable. Now, you'll have to reorder or balance the equation to isolate the variable and get the remaining value. So take a minute, probably get a scrap piece of scratch paper out, and let's see if we can uh, work through this together. So the answer options would be 12.625, negative four, or negative 12. Now, to answer this question, we begin by substituting in the value of five for the variable x in the original equation. So this is gonna give us four times five minus five y over two equals negative 10. So simplification of four times five can be performed so that the equation simply becomes 20 minus five y over two equals negative 10. Next, 20 can be subtracted on each side of the equal sign in order to get the variable y closer to being alone. So this is gonna look like negative five y over two equals negative 30. Next, either the two can be multiplied to each side of the problem before negative five is divided on each side, or else the fraction negative two fifths can be multiplied on each side of the equation in order to cancel out the negative five over two that is multiplied by the y. So we're just trying to balance the equation. The result of that, or both those, is that y equals negative 30 times negative two over five, which simplifies to y equals 60 over five, or simply y equals 12. Now remember, when you multiply a negative times a negative, the two negatives become a positive. So those are five types of questions you'll likely see on the exam. So in, when I say likely to see on the exam, you're not only gonna see questions very similar to this, but those concepts are gonna keep coming up. So make sure you're familiar with these concepts, and if you have any questions, leave a comment below.